Welcome, welcome. Tuesday night and here we are, ready to go on a vacation. We've got a travel wardrobe all ready to go. You're gonna come with us. We're just gonna have some fun. So really, I, I have had a lot of fun doing this and I even took a little vacation to make sure it worked. Ha ha. <laughs> and it works, it works. So we're gonna go over what we're gonna travel with and we're not, we're not talking about where we're going, but we are gonna talk about how you can cater it to how to what you want. If you're going to a pool or if you're going, you know, swimwear or not swimwear or just an art show or just to some friend's house, you know, you can kind of dif differentiate to where you're going. And that's what I liked about all this. So everything, once it's done, I was going to bring my suitcase and put it in my carry-on. You know, all the years I've traveled, I've lost so much luggage and so much money, I can't stand checking. So Heaven forbid I have to check anything. I know there's times you can, but cl clearly a week, uh, you ought to be able to, you know, take what we're doing. And we're doing two pants, um, two tops, two dresses, and then four, I'm going to call them jackets or coverings, I guess is what I'm going to call them, because they're definitely not all jackets, and they're definitely not, you know, they're just jackets. We'll call them jackets, okay? All right. So we're going to start with our very first picture here, and truly, truly welcome everybody. We're just going to have some fun tonight. Oh, and I just forgot to tell you that we are going to do some giveaways, so you want to make sure that you get, we'll do them like at 8.30. You want to make sure that you get registered or, you know, whatever you have to do to get to where you can type. Okay, so we're going to start with this one, and the reason why is because it is just a, it's like a, I'm not going to say a moo moo because it's not a moo moo. It's way better than that, but it's just fun. And what I did is I took pattern number 450 um, and I just added 20 inches to the bottom. I made everything about it what I liked, like I like slits in the side. So I think this reversible fabric is perfect for it. The fabric is 6432, but we've got lots of different colors and lots of different fabrics. You know, the, this reversible, so it's just cute and easy to work with. It's 100% cotton, so you know it's really cool. I had one email that said that she was looking through a catalog, and she said she saw the same dress in different ways, you know, all through the catalog. It's really true. It's just gotten really popular. The original on this that I copied off of was a Tory Burch, and so it's kind of Tory Burch's base design. Now, sometimes this yoke is longer, and you can simply make it longer if you want to. You still wouldn't change um, the point of the cut. Um, there, there is, I don't think there's a dot on the pattern and I didn't put a dot on the pattern because I want you to know that you can change it where it goes. It obviously has to be, you know, the, the dot has to be, you have to, the dot is basically where you sew down to. And you can sew down further, you can sew, you know, all you have to do is sew down enough to where you can get it over your head. So don't feel like, hey, the dot's missing. It's not missing. It's just so that you can vary it a little bit. I don't want you to um, follow the direction to the point where you cut it down and then it's too low. Just think about where you want it on you. If you're going to wear the dress over something, you could cut it way down and then the neckline would be more open. And this I've kind of thought about is on my trip is going to be my swimsuit cover-up. I'm just going to throw it on. It's going to be really easy. I'll put a belt on it when I want to, you know, just if it's not under my swimsuit, but if I'm putting it on over a swimsuit, I can go down to the pool. And again, it's cotton, so it's going to something that's going to dry really quick and easy. And it's just cute. So pattern number 450, we'll leave that there. I added 20 inches, but it's completely up to you. The fabric is 6432. And I use three yards because that additional, you know, it took, it's, it's almost, um, it's over a yard long. I mean, it's over, yeah, it's over a yard long. And then sleeves take up a yard and then the miscellaneous. I might've used two yards, can't remember. But just go by your size, lay it out on some fabric you have, okay? So just cute and fun. And again, you can go through and whatever you call them, you can search for them and get lots of ideas. Obviously, I used the back of the fabric. That was my contrast. 
And you can contrast it all over the place, especially with this fabric. I thought about making the back, the whole entire back, a different color, but I like the stripes, so I stuck with that. Okay? And you, again, you get to make so many fun decisions that that's what makes sewing so fun is all the decisions we get to make. It's a lot of fun. All right, so let's look at the next picture. And so I went to um, Miami. So Miami has shopping that is just amazing. Like it's just, I can't find shopping anywhere else in the US like Miami <laughs> because they do a lot of, um, there's just a lot of Cubans, there's a lot of South Americans, there's a lot of foreigners. It's a very multicultural city. And I really enjoy because there's clothes coming in from all over and so I love going down there and looking for our new patterns. <laughs> it's kind of my little find for new patterns. And I, I always find just amazing ideas and great things, and I love going. I always use miles. I never pay a thing. I just let my miles accumulate, and then bam, I zip down there for a couple days, and nobody knows I'm gone. All right, so while I was down there, though, Again, the shopping, you know, I'm going from mall to mall to shopping district to art, art festival, you know, everything. And I run along and I see this Burberry trench and it's pink and it's on a mannequin and it's at Saks Fifth Avenue and I fall in love with it. It does not look near as cute here in this picture as it does in real life, but it is adorable. So I say, okay, I started doing my research on trenches and trench coats. And I decide that, um, well, I mean, this it's a shorter trench is what it is. And it's really popular for spring and summer. They're wearing it kind of like a jean jacket, if that's a fair statement. It's really, so they made it shorter. Now, last fall, thanks to Cindy, Cindy, thank you, if you're watching, um, we did a crop, a crop trench. And that crop trench was like right to waist. This is longer. If you go in and look at this description, and it has the name of this jacket here, but you can just search for the description of it. It's 22 inches long. So 22 inches, if you notice how the sleeve hits, you can see that the sleeve is going to be longer than the jacket itself. I shortened the pattern 14 inches, just FYI what I did. Now, if you're shorter, you might not want it to be 22. 22 inches might not work well on you, but I love the length of this. And I just, I'll tell you all the things I discovered because this was a lot of fun and I love it. I did it unlined. I did not, I did, decided not to line it. The fabric is brand new. I just put it up. It is a, um, it's a poochie and it is a poly lycra. It's, it's just gorgeous. Like I have never, <laughs> I, I, it's beautiful. It presses well. I don't, you know, understand all the things about all these new fabrics I'm I'm learning but the fabric is 6496 we have very limited yardage on it and I think it's just stunning so what I did is I first started looking for once I saw it and I saw it early on in my little trip so I started just looking everywhere for trench coats and they're all over the place along with jean jackets they're right there neck and neck but the trench coat is a great little throw on you could do a short sleeve a lot of the sleeves are being scrunched and I mean I walked into one store and <laughs> every sleeve was scrunched and I even said to the girl is there something wrong with that sleeve <laughs> knowing that they don't know who I am and I can get away with asking any question she said no we just like scrunching them every sleeve was scrunched like this into like a short sleeve so you can do long sleeve they scrunch really easily and then you have the option of doing a long sleeve or a short sleeve and i think it's really cute all right so then i started looking at printed trench coats as opposed to solid there aren't a lot of printed ones out there they're, they're they are out there but they're fairly militant and then i ran across a, a few wild ones like this and I decided, man, this is the one for me. I just loved it. I just loved, I mean, it wasn't exactly this, but it, just the whole print idea, I just fell in love with it. So that's where I decided to do a print. And then I started looking at what things I could wear with it and how I could, you know, make it more versatile. Okay, but then what I started looking at what were buttons that are used on a trench, okay? So I, I took, I'm going to take these off because... 
um, I decided to use these, the same buttons that are on just about every Burberry trench out there. And if you notice, it doesn't matter even as the colors change, the colors of the buttons change, but there's still a sew on four hole button. And I like it. I mean, I actually like it on this, but I'm going to tell you that my first, um, my first thought was, I just dropped that. I'm going to try this again. I got two in my hand was to go to a metal button because metal buttons are kind of military and, you know, trench coat is kind of that. Okay, so I just, I, I thought I'll go to the military. So then I started looking around and what I noticed were the, the least, the less expensive ones used, <laughs> used metal buttons and the more expensive ones used the flat. So you can do your own research, but I'm just going to tip you up. The trench coats that were a thousand up used all of these really nice buttons whereas the cheaper ones used a metal button. So somehow I guess a metal button is cheaper and um, that was my decision. So I decided to nix the metal and I really like the metal so it was a real struggle for me. But I, I really do like these and I think they bring out the colors of the brown and the black and that I, I did want to do that because I want to pair it with the blue jean and I want to pair it with a black legging, what I have on. So that kind of answered my question for me. Um, you know, with a trench coat, you can do as much top stitching or as little top stitching. I decided to leave the belt on. I like the belt. And so that was kind of just, you know, again, it goes back to all these fun personal decisions that you get to make. Is the Poochie you're showing signed on the fabric? No, this is not. There is no Poochie signature on this. It is not. How much yardage for a short trench? Um, I don't know. I would, I would say two yards. Look, just look at the pattern. And I know it, does, it wouldn't be efficient because you'd have to take away a yard. I think I use three yards because you've got uh, my shield back here. This fabric is really just got really good um, density, I guess is the right word to it. So this shield in the pattern is duplicated and I did not do it. All I did was do a little, um, I just hemmed it because that saved me yardage. The fabric is not cheap. And then this right here, this is a shield and I did do double on this just because I felt like, I don't know, I just, it was a little piece. So to have, to do that double was not a big deal, but, um, but again, it was, it's unlined. I did not line it. Okay. All right. So again, that's pattern number 1925. It's a short trench. I took off 14 inches and I used fabric 6496. Okay. So then what I did is I thought about, okay, now I love this trench. What am I going to wear this trench with? And I came to this store called the Wolford and I'm sure many of you have heard of it. There's a place in Miami, it's actually Miami Beach, or Bal Harbor, it's called Bal Harbor. It's called Bal Harbor Shops. And um, <laughs> it, you, you have to pay to park. In fact, that's, that's actually the only payment I did make on this vacation was I actually had to pay to park. And there's no validation. Like I even said to, the val to the, one of the guys, do you get validated if you buy anything? Not that I was gonna buy anything. He said, he looked at me <laughs> like I was from the poor side of town. No, no ma'am, you don't. You have to pay for parking. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I had to pay for parking. Um, you know, it's like 10 bucks to go shop in their shops, but it was well worth $10. The stores are just absolutely incredible. And not only that, but the displays and, you know, got all those things that go with high-end shopping. It was just incredible. It was a lot of fun. And I'm in hog heaven. You know, I'm just having a great time just experiencing this all and taking it all in. So it's called Bal Harbor Shops. And there's a shop in there called Wolford. It's W-O-L-F-O-R-D, okay? And in this little shop, there's a dress, and it's called the Fatale. And, you know, we've heard the expression femme fatale, and um, it's been used different ways, and it's, it's F-A-T-A-L, fatal, but it's, I think, pronounced fatale, and it's supposed to be this French dress. And what it is is it's a tube dress. But this tube... And I'm going to tell you all because I'm not going to sit here and manipulate it all these different ways. I'll show you some ways, but let's look at this next picture. 
And that is the dress. It is, um, it's, let's see, I don't want to mess this up. How long is it? It's 90 inches long. That's not right. You know, I might have forgotten to write it on here. It is, I did forget to write it on here. Okay, let me think. It's 40 inches long and it's 24 inches around. Now, think about that. And that's a size medium. I measured a medium, okay? <laughs> because I went in to try it on and I said, um, she said, what size? And I said, I have no idea how they run. How do they run? She goes, oh, you'll be a medium. Now, mind you, I mean, my bust is like 38, and she gives me a medium, which is measuring 24, okay? Now, if you do the math, that's a whole lot of negative ease, okay? And a little too much for me personally, but that's what she said should be my size. So I took it back to the dressing room, and I'm, you know, they have it in, and, and again, you're going to, you're going to search for this because on YouTube they have all these different ways to wear it and to do it. But to make this thing would be so perfect for traveling. It'd be so perfect for, you know, like I did one under the dress here. I'll show it to you. Um, I could pick with a trench what colors I wanted, what I wanted to wear it with, you know, all that other stuff. And so here's my little fatale dress, except mine matches my trench coat, which is exactly what I wanted. And you could always wear this belt with it. So it's just a tube. It's hemmed at the top. It's hemmed at the bottom. But the, again, the thing about making this is it only goes to size large. <laughs> so there's no way I could, I would wear a large in public. There's no way this could accommodate me. So I decided, and they're $240, just as a side note. The fabric itself is, it's like a yoga pant. It's just exactly, in fact, it's exactly like that, um, let's see, I wrote the fabric down, I hope I didn't screw this up, um, I might have screwed this up, I might, but anyway, it's a new black ITY knit that I've put up, it, it, feel, it felt exactly the same as those ITYs. It has stretch in both directions, but this one that I made, it, you do not need stretch in both directions. You only need the stretch going around, and you just don't need that much negative ease. You need enough to hold it up, but y'all know you could just put elastic in through here. The reason it doesn't have elastic is because it turns into a skirt, it turns into a top, it, and it, it can be a dress. So, so the versatility of this piece is what I want to bring to your attention because that's the beauty of traveling with it, especially when it's in a base color. This is, this is one here. I made this, this one. Especially when it's in a base color because we're going to play with it a little bit. So this Fatale dress is by Wolford and it's just easy to do. So you make it the length you want it and then you make it the circumference. You just put one seam. I put one seam down the back or down the side where you could put the seam down the front, I guess. You could make it decorative. You could put a zipper in it. Yada, yada, yada. You could go and go and go and go. All I wanted to do is make you aware of it, and it's a whole lot of fun. Okay, what pattern did you use? Um, I think you're talking about the trench coat, so I'm going to go back to the trench for just a minute. Maybe? The trench was 1920. I think I might have said 18. 1925. Yeah, just ask again, and we'll make sure we get the right one. The trench is 1921 called Barbara's Trench. When stitching on the buttons on the trench, do they go through only top layer? And do you add button on the back for strength? Um, it would depend on your fabric. But this fabric does not need any. I went through both layers. It doesn't need anything for strength. It's got, it's, it's great. I mean, it, there's no interfacing in there. Two layers because it's got a front facing is perfect. And so you don't need anything additional. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the next couple pictures, and I just wanted you to see some of the pictures of the Fatale dress. This is, there's the short version. You can wear it as a short dress. Then you can wear it as, a, what do they call it? Anyway, a, a knee-length dress. Okay, and, and so there's just so many versions. And again, you fold it completely in half, and you can wear it as a skirt knee length. But you can see that it goes with many things. So one of the things I'm putting it with is a jean jacket because I just could not go into a store without seeing jean jackets. 
Like, I like them, and it's a good thing I like them, but if you didn't like them, you'd get really annoyed because they're everywhere. And the resounding theme that I noticed about jean jackets was they're, uh, they're like part denim and part something else, part shears, part whole, like, they're like almost nothing. And I noticed a lot of them had knit sleeves because you just roll up on the jean jacket, you just push up the sleeves anyway. So if you don't want to do the cuff and you don't want to do all that, just throw on a knit sleeve and that's what I did on this one. This one is 64.55. 64.55 is the fabric because I thought it kind of looked lacy. Even though it's not lacy, it's ITY. I like the way it looked and it matches my denim dress that I made a couple weeks ago. And that's out of 425. So the jean jacket you guys know is pattern 900. And then the dress, the denim dress I made was 425. Okay? Okay. How are we doing? Should we have a drawing? What's that? Okay, let's wait a little bit and then we'll have a drawing. Okay, so I want to, I'm going to take off this jean jacket here for a little bit. And we're going to play with this little dress for a minute. Because it is fun. It's fun and you guys should know about it. And I think everybody can benefit from it. So when you want to make this thing just a top, you double it and you put it on the top half. And you know what actually, what I saw is I had gone to Miami and I had my swimsuit, but I forgot a cover up. So I was kind of looking for, okay, what could I wear to the pool? And they had this to where it was like this on the mannequin but it was gathered down here. So that's the other cool thing about it is you can make it look like it's ruched where it's not ruched at all. But because it's so tight, <laughs> you know, that's how I saw it originally. I thought, oh, I could put that on over my swimsuit. I mean, obviously for two yards of fabric, I wasn't gonna pay $240, but um, there's certainly a lot that you can do with it. And when you have, co isn't that cute? I really like it. And again, it's very light fabric. It's, it's like um, that ITY. So it's very light, it's very thin, and you can scrunch it like that and do something. And you don't have to have a great figure to wear this because you're gonna put your trench over it or you're gonna put a wrap over it. I'm gonna show you how to do that wrap in a minute. You're gonna put something over it so you're not really gonna see it. All you're gonna see is kind of the ruching underneath and it's just gonna be cute. Okay. Okay, drawing time? Okay, so let's do drawing time. And are we okay to do that? Are we okay to start that? Hang on just one second. We're gonna give away two things tonight. And um, this is PBS month. It's National Fit to Stitch Month. How about that? National Fit to Stitch Month. All right, so the first thing, and this is because of you guys. You guys are generous as can be. We're going to give away a pattern, which is 1819, which would be a great travel, by the way. 1819. 1819 is still available. Oh, sorry. So put in 1819. 1819. Put in those four numbers. 1819. And we'll give it just a minute and the computer will select it. So 1819 is still available. If you go to the Fit to Stitch site, um, there's two patterns that are available together. And they're 125 and 1819. And so we're on Fit to Stitch, you know, we're having a couple things going on. Every item you buy from Fit to Stitch, even if you make a donation, every item that you buy, um, your name it will go into a drawing. So if you buy three patterns, your name will go in three times. And then two weeks from tonight, we're going to have a drawing for $100 worth of fabric, but we're going to have five of them. So if you bought three patterns or three DVD series or five, whatever you buy, each, your name will go into this hat, I guess we'll call it a hat, and we'll draw it. And we'll draw five people and you get $100 worth of fabric for nothing. How about that? Okay, so I thought that was kind of cool because y'all love fabric. We all love fabric. Who doesn't want $100 in fabric? And we'll even pay the shipping on it. Do you still have the denim dress fabric? Yes, that fabric number is 6425. 6425. 
Okay, so 1819. Is everybody putting in 1819? All right. The tube dress has no dart. No, the tube dress has so much negative ease. There's no gapping, there's no nothing. It's just, it's kind of like, I don't know, doesn't matter, but it has a lot of negative ease. Remember, she told me I was a medium and that's a 38 inch bust to a 24 inch. If I can do the math correctly, that's almost half. <laughs> so I don't do that. You know, I don't, I don't do that. Okay, Janet Breer, you have won the 1819. And if you will shoot me an email, it says I won pattern 1819, we will send it to you. And we appreciate you watching. We appreciate you playing our little, our little I want a pattern. We're going to step it up a little bit, though, now. We're going to give away a DVD. And again, it's not us, you guys. You all are so kind that, you know, apparently you have duplicates of some kind, and so you ship them to us. You pay the shipping, and you say, you know, we've got a duplicate. Do you want to give it away? And we do. We'll pay the shipping to you, but, gosh, it's the least we can do. It's not a big deal. So, we, again, we appreciate you watching. All right, and we'll have to wait till our common commander is ready. You ready? Okay, so this one is one of my favorites. I think this is a good one. Tissue issues made easy. So the password, or the, the whatever the word is, that you're going to type in is issues. I-S-S-U-E-S. -S -S. And that, when you type that word in, that's admitting that we all have issues and that the DVD will solve them. Tissue issues made easy. So this is a video that goes through um, all the problems that you have and how to solve them on the tissue. Like sometimes I say to you, let's do this, but then how to transfer it back. So shortening, lengthening, wrinkle, all kinds of stuff. Sway back, da 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 Okay, they're all on here. So issues, I-S-S-U-E-S, -S -S, issues. Okay. Okay. All right, so how did you determine the width and length for the tube dress? So I did two things. I measured the original in the store. I was in the store and the sales girl was helping me and she said, I said, how do you know what size to wear? And she said, I think you're a medium. And when she handed me the medium and I went back to the dressing room, y'all know I never go anywhere without a tape measure. I measured it and it was 24 inches around and it was 40 inches long. And for that, it cost $240. But the biggest problem was, as I kind of wiggled into it, which I could get it on, but I just, she said, she said, oh, why don't you come out and show me? I'm like, no, I don't think so. You know, I mean, I was just, it's like a tube of toothpaste. You know, it's just really squeezed. So when I made this one, I thought, okay, I don't want it to be 24 on my 38 inch bust. What do I want it to be? And this one's like cute. It's really cute. Like a little belt and a little jacket. It's really cute. So the whole idea of making this thing, I want you to go to the YouTube video and you can see all the way they do it and all these people have reviewed it. And it's adorable, but it, can, it needs to be fixed, I think. And, and that women are going around wearing it that tight and that much negative ease, I think is interesting, but you know, they are. so. Okay, so does that help? I measured my bust. You know, decide how, negative, how much negative ease you want. And then, you know, there is one seam, so you could make the bottom bigger than the top if you wanted. You can do all of that stuff. Okay, Kim Greeby. Kim, you won the tissue issues, and if you'll email me and let me know that, we'll mail you the tissue issues. Okay. Did you say what was the circumference that you used for your dress? Yes. Now, again, it's based on the, this fabric, um, maybe I didn't. So this is 6378, this pink, and this is a one-way stretch. So 
I wrap the fabric, I know I tell you to do this all the time, but I actually really did do this. I wrap the fabric around me, and again, I have a 38 inch bust, so what I did, it ended up being 35. And that 35 was good, it, would, it stayed up, no elastic is necessary, and bam, it made my seam, and it worked. And I really like it, I mean, isn't that pretty? I mean, I love the little pink variegation, but again, it only has stretch in one direction. So when you do it, you've got to make sure that, that when you're doing it, you've got the stretch going in the right direction. So 6378 is this Fatal dress. And then the second one I did, and I did it out of a the black ITY. I don't know what the fabric is. Oh, it's 6486. I do have it on here. 6486 is the black ITY. Okay, so what size did you make it? Yeah, that's the 35, okay? Okay, would your trick of wrapping the fabric around to determine the circumference help here? Yes, it's a great trick. It's not a trick. <laughs> Hate to call it a trick. It makes it sound like, you know, it's deceiving. It's so simple, just think about it. Or, you know, you could, if you had your little chart and you know what the Brett chart is, and if you just went in and knew what you like negative ease, you know, then you would know that. When I <laughs> was in the dressing room and I took this little package that she gave me and I took the little dress out of the package, <laughs> I looked at it and just started laughing because there's just no way. Like I was surprised I could get it on. But then when I measured it and it was 24 inches, I mean, it's like, I said, you know, I asked her, I said, is there a larger size? She said, well, we don't have it in stock. They have a large, but even the large just <laughs> isn't going to cut it. So anyway, I was off the size chart in that, in that category. Okay, so let's go to the next picture if we can. Appreciate y'all's patience. Okay, so I love this. I absolutely fell in love with this. Um, the pr this, is a, this is a cashmere. Um, but it does so beautiful in so many different fabrics. I just thought this is a beautiful little travel, whatever, jacket, wrap, whatever it is. So I really went to a lot of work to get these measurements because um, I couldn't find it. I mean, you know, I couldn't find it. So I did this in a yellow, and I just, I, I love it. I hope you all like it, but I just really like it. So what it is, it's 90 inches long times 40 inches wide. Now, you know, a lot of times I'll say to you guys, well, you can adjust it for your height and if you're short, you know, there's no adjustment on this. This, those measurements are gonna be the same for every height out there because it's just how long it needs to be to make a bow and it wraps around the shoulders and comes in. Um, I don't think it needs to be any longer and any wider, you don't wanna do that either. So I cut two yards and made it, and I did it out of a woven, and you can do it out of a woven. And I'm gonna give you some fabrics, and I'm not doing this to sell fabrics. I'm doing this so you can get to see what type of fabrics would work well on doing this. Because you can see, this would be great over this little dress. This would be great over what I have on. So you could take your base pant and your base top and put this in any color over it, and it just makes a pretty little anything. It could be daytime, it, you know, it protects from the sun. It could be a, a pool, a beach cover-up. Could be lots of different things. And once you open it up, you could wrap it around like a sarong skirt. So it just, it's fun. I just thought it was so pretty. Um, how did you hem the tube dress top and bottom? I just turned under, this is how the original was done. I turned under an inch and top stitched, bottom and top. So I left an inch at the top and an inch at the bottom, okay? Can you raise up a bodice on a front pattern piece? Can you raise up a bodice on a front pattern piece? Boy, I don't know what you're asking on that. You're gonna have to rephrase that, you know, or, or send me an email, either one. Okay, so let's go back to this blue, f this yellow for just a minute, the picture's blue. I'm gonna give you some fabric numbers, so just kind of follow along. This is number 6414. It's a beautiful, 100% cotton. I went ahead and I finished the whole thing with a little rolled hem. And that's, a, it's actually a white, 
but it's so pretty on the yellow. I just, I really love the combination of that. I just really like this. So I'm going to give you some fabric numbers that I thought would work well. So 6484. You can just kind of put these in the search bar and see what comes up. 6308. 6328. 6429. And 6435. Now, the reasons I chose these five, and plus the one I did, is because you can see in the photo that the, the, it has to be very fine. The fabric itself has to be very fine. And not any knit or any woven will work, because what you're looking for is when you tie the bow, you don't want a big wad um, at the tie. It's, it's got to collapse down to where it is fairly, you know, pretty. Okay, now again, it's 90 by 40. Now what I did, so because you think about it, if you went 90 inches long, you'd have to do two and a half yards. So I cut a yard, I cut two yards, sorry, and then I put a seam at center back. And I've noticed for me that when I do things like this, you know, that kind of wrap or tie or whatever, I like having a seam at center back because I like knowing where the back is. A lot of things that you purchase, they have a label. And you could put a label, you know, if you wanted to, but I like a seam at center back because that really helps me. So I did a, I surged a seam here, and it looks like a French seam, and you could do a French seam. And then you can see that I just went ahead and, um, and did the two sides. So it's 90 inches long, so I only had to make it 45. I still had to get use two yards and then it was 40 wide. But it's pretty, it's pretty. And when you fold it up, it just literally packs down to nothing. So it's not even gonna take up extra space in your suitcase. And you've got that as well as a dress. You could make them out of the same fabric. Wouldn't that be so pretty? So simple and so pretty. I just love the ideas of how we can do and make things that are just so simplistic, but really, really look terrific. You know, a little bit of jewelry, it looked like a million bucks. All right. Any questions on that? Easy enough? I think that's the last picture, right? Is that right? Okay. Okay, so then I want to talk about the one I have on because the goal was, I noticed that when I travel, I am always, want, I'm always cold, number one. So, even if I'm going to a place, I'm going to use Miami as my example, and I have on, you know, it's 80-something it's degrees, 85, and I'm going to be wearing sleeveless and short sleeve and all that stuff. I can't travel on a plane sleeveless. I'm just freezing. It's so cold on a plane. I can't do it. So I always do something that's just really easy, really comfortable, and long-sleeved. So I made this um, 196. Because it, for me, it was just my throw on at the end of the day um, on the airplane type thing, little wrap that I could do. The 196 is, the fabric is 6487. You all know I love this, this print or whatever it's saying. I think you can see it in the back. I haven't even read all the words, but I like it. And I actually copied one of the ladies that came to the holiday party here, or it wasn't the holiday party, it was a spring party, sorry, a couple weeks ago. She had bought the fabric and made it up, and it just was so cute on her, I had to have one. So I copied her. So, um, thank you, Margaret. Anyway, so I love it. Now, one thing I've done is, again, in all my shopping, I'm noticing details. And on this, um, or little wraps, especially when you want them to kind of uh, fold down, is they're doing rolled edges on the edge. Instead of doing a surged edge and then turning it or anything else, they're doing a little uh, rolled edge. So I did the whole, all of the hem, the whole entire thing is a rolled edge. And what I notice is it just almost disappears. I, I really, really like it. And I, I've gone through periods where I don't necessarily like it, but I like it. I did everything. So the neck edge is rolled, the bottom is rolled, and the sleeve at the bottom of the sleeve is rolled. And I like it on this because I really want it to really not have a finish. 
And I think that rolled edge almost makes that happen. So I did a three thread rolled edge on the serger. I guess I'm asking if you can raise a neckline. And if you do, do you have to change the back? Um, you, of course you can raise a neckline, but I think I'm, I'm if you tell me uh, where, like what neckline, like that will help me understand kind of what, where you're thinking. Okay, so demo how it's tied. Yeah, that's just two tight. Just you've got a long front here. You've got two long fronts. The pattern. Okay, and you're just going to do right over. Le oh, the wrong thing. Sorry. <laughs> My son's back there laughing at me because I'm totally missing what you're asking. Can I demo how this is tied? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Yes, here I'm going to undo this because it's really easy. It's the same way, how's that? So you're just gonna put this around. So pretty, I just love this. And you just wanna bring it over your shoulders. I noticed that it's a little bit up here. It's like a little shawl collar. So even though this is just, um, it's just straight, kind of fold it up a little bit like this and you kind of make the little collar there. Okay, and then keep it even on both sides. And then it's above your elbow. It's above your elbow because you don't want it to limit movement. Make sure it's even, and then just wrap it, over, wrap it around one time, okay? And see, that side doesn't have an arm, so it looks a little lopsided, but just keep it above your elbow here so that it can be tight, but you're not gonna limit any movement at all. And then you're just gonna, this is just gonna be a bow. And y'all know how to tie a nice bow? and then just let the rest hang down, and that's it, okay? Very easy. Did it look as good as I tied it the first time? So when you do this, this goes underneath and around, and then comes over. That actually looks better. But you want to take advantage of all that width and pull out the bow so that it just look, it almost doesn't, you don't even want it to look like a bow. I just think it's so pretty. It's such a pretty way to end it. You don't have to tie a bow. You could actually just lap it over. I just thought it was so pretty the way it was done. And so I just loved it. And like I said, it was on my mission to find it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So on our traveling, you can see that I've got two tops, got the top I've got on and then bring another top bring another base. And then two pants, I've got a leggings and another pair of pants. I've got two dresses, I've got this dress and then the denim dress. And generally when you do two dresses, I would do one that was kind of casually comfortable and one that was a little, you know, more straight skirt. No, I wouldn't do two that are flared, two that are similar. Get yourself two different looks with those dresses. And then of course this is a dress too. This is the top. This is what I used for my second top. And then I've got the, the, this jacket, the trench, I got a jean jacket, I've got the little wrap that I've got on, and then I've got this. And both, like I said, they can all be just really versatile because they all go with something else. Isn't that fun? Throw them all in a suitcase, you can go for a week. And you can like what you're going with because, you know, I made all this in just a little bit of time, so it doesn't take you long, you just gotta Get focused and have fun. And I think it's partly getting your fabrics that are going to work well together. It's really fun. I mean, it's just fun to sew new stuff. And then it's fun to have an excuse to wear it to go somewhere. So. <laughs> okay, can you raise up a bodice on a front pattern? Okay. Oh, it's the same question? No, so if you're changing the neckline, don't think of anything to do with the back. The neckline really, you're not changing the back. You're just trying to raise it up. So you shouldn't even be, you should just use a French curve and then just pop it up. Just literally raise it up. But that answer is on tissue issues. I guess now that um, it's been given away, we don't have the answers here anymore. <laughs> All right, any other, qu okay. Will you show the denim dress without the yellow wrap? Sure. I have to take off my really pretty wrap, huh? Yeah, the denim dress, because here's what I did is I made this out of the same fabric 
And so I thought, and the denim dress is sleeveless, so I thought it'd be cute to put this on the denim dress too. Isn't that cute? Same fabric. I thought that was kind of cute together, huh? But you can wear it by itself, or if you, you know, need a little jacket to go over it, you can put the little denim on top, and you can easily put collar on top of collar, and you can wear one up, and it out, or you can do it like that. It's too cute, but yes, I can show it by itself. I guess I'm getting carried away. It's not what you wanted. You wanted to see it by itself. This is 425, and 425 is uh, the POM for last month. See, and then we could do this on this one. <laughs> All right, um, I missed how to get a 40 by 90 wrap out of two yards. My math braid is not working. <laughs> well, two yards is 72 inches long, but it's 60 inches wide, and you only need it to be 40 inches wide. So what I did is I cut it the width. Like this particular fabric, um, I cut the width, so that's the fabric right there, but it's more than one yard because you can't get one yard, um, it's, it's longer than one yard. So you can go the width of the fabric and get the 45, 45 and 45 is 90, this is the 45 this way, does that make sense? But you have to put a seam in it, okay? And it's late, so math brains go to sleep at usually around 6 p.m. So since we're that past that, I hear you that it doesn't work anymore. Can you show us the short trench on you? Sure, a lot of times, you know, when you guys ask this stuff, I say no, because I don't want to be the model. These are what these ladies are. These ladies are the models. But this is really cute. So, <laughs> so maybe yes. I love this little trench. It's like my new fave jacket. Woo, baby. Okay, so I did this. And then I put my little, I've got my little microphone packs on all over the place. <gasps> I don't have a mirror. Isn't it cute? I can't see if it's cute, but <laughs> I just love this trench. Oh, I gotta scrunch my sleeves because you know everything's scrunched these days. All right, I don't know why you needed that, but there you have it. All right, so tomorrow, keep in mind a couple things while y'all are asking questions. Uh, till two weeks from tonight is still the fit to stitch. So everything you buy, you know, we use your, use your coupon. We sent out a coupon in the email. I think it's 20 site, T 2020 site, S-I-T-E. So use your coupon in the email. We'll mail it out again tomorrow. That helps you save. What is the pattern number for the denim dress, please? 425. It's the POM for May. OK. Um, and then tonight, or watch for your emails tomorrow, we're releasing the Italy trip. OK. So we have all the details worked out. Pretty excited. We won't give you an exact itinerary, but we're gonna, I'm gonna label it pretty close. All your expenses are included, except for your airfare. Your airfare is not included in this price. A lot of people use miles, so I did not want to include airfare. And it's too hard to include airfare anyway, because people are coming from so many different places. But it's all your transportation, all your food, all your hotel, four nights, yada, yada, yada. Transportation from the airport to the hotel, what airport to fly into, all this fun stuff. And we're going to Italy March 20th through the 24th, I think it is. Okay. To make the denim dress sleeveless, do you adjust the armhole? So there's four armholes. There's a jacket, a blouse, a knit, and a sleeveless. This pattern was a blouse armhole. So if I'm going to make it sleeveless, I would adjust it to my sleeveless template and not use that, you know, not use the blouse. 
for some of you, not all of you, because everybody's a little different, but if you take a blouse armhole and just leave off the sleeve, the armhole will be too low. It'll, it'll just be too low. Not for everybody, depends on how tall you are. So I would go back in and use your sleeveless template and draw on your sleeveless template. Raise that armhole up just to make sure. Don't, don't just leave it and not worry about it. Worry about it, okay? Okay, what else? Are we good? Where are we going? All right, let's go. It all fits into a suitcase. I figured it'd take too long for me to take it all off and pack it. You'll trust me that it goes in a carry-on. It does, because I did it. And we'll see you, you guys know, whenever I go, I travel with my little carry-on. Am I okay? Oh, my mic. Yeah, see, that's why I don't try things on. I forget that I'm, I mess things up. <laughs> all right, you all. The goal is to have happy sewing. Thursday night is Q&As. So there, that's live Q&A. So if you have any questions or if you've sent in questions that I haven't answered, that's because I answer them on the Q&A. Okay? What's that? Anything else here? Two more questions. Okay? Do armhole templates have seam allowances? They should. They should because, just think about it, if you had a template that didn't have seam allowance, when you go to cut it, you'd have to add seam allowance every single time you went to cut it. That doesn't make sense. So it makes sense to have the armhole the size you want, have the seam allowance added, and then use that as a template. Use the seam allowance armhole as your template. An armhole without seam allowance is just more work for you. So yes, I would always keep that seam allowance on there. Okay, and then you just put it at the shoulder and you put it at the side seam. Okay? Okay, what else? Is that it? Uh huh. Do armhole templates have seam allowance on shoulder and side? Yes. Uh, for a sleeveless top, is there any difference between the woven and the knit armhole? No. Sleeveless is sleeveless. Sleeveless does, like for our tank top, for instance. In fact, I have a tank top on underneath three layers down. I have on a tank top. And on that tank top, um, in fact, that's 514. I don't think I ever got to that. But anyway, it's 514. Um, that pattern is for a tank top. A tank top, it doesn't matter if it's knit or woven. Typically, we, can, we wear the tank top the same. It doesn't have to be. I mean, you could wear a lot of negative ease in a knit that you can't in a woven. But the armhole itself is the same. Okay. All right. Are we good? All right. It's time for us to say happy sewing. Happy sewing, you all. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye.